Greetings everyone, it's Professor Fiore, and in this video we are going to talk about an op-amp based ideal current amplifier. In other words, a CCCS, current controlled current source. And here's a typical circuit. So, we've got a current generator out here, this is our input. And our load, I'm interested in the current flowing through the load. So, the actual value of the load resistance should not play a role in what the load current is we should just get some multiplying effect, some current gain, A sub I, times I generator, and that would give us the load current. As usual, this would be within the constraints of the op amp. If we try to produce a current greater than the op amp is capable, we'll get clipping. If we try to produce uh, a load voltage, right, the voltage across our load, that's bigger, again, than the uh, op amp is capable, again, we're gonna get clipping, all right? So within those constraints, that's what we should get, something along that range. And the idea here is, well, exactly how do we find that gain equation? So let's do a quick little analysis over here. All right. Okay, so we have a couple of rules to remember, right? The rules of the road for our linear operation and our op amps. Rule number one the error, which is the difference between the two signal inputs, is approximately zero. All right, so for us, that means this voltage right here, that's zero volts. Rule number two, the input currents into the op amps, the signal currents, these are also approximately zero. All right, so for the rule number one, because this voltage should be zero or darn close to it, right? You know, fraction of a millivolt perhaps. Then we can say that minus input of the op amp is also at zero. In fact, we call this point a virtual ground, right? It's not a true ground. You wouldn't connect the power supply, you know, the bottom of the power supply to that, but it's a virtual ground. It's nearly zero volts, all right? So this is an ideal load, so to speak, for our current source. It just dumps all its current into this node. Now, what happens at that node? Kirchhoff's current law. What goes in must come out. Well, the current into pin 2, the minus input, the inverting input of the op amp, that must be 0. We're darn close to it. So that means all of I gen flows down through our I, and that will produce a voltage with this polarity, plus to minus, top to bottom. So we can say that this node here, I will call that point A. So that is voltage VA, right? That voltage that's developed across our I must be the same as the voltage across our F. Why? Because they obviously both share node A and they also share ground, right? This goes to true ground. This one goes to our virtual ground. So the voltage across RF and the voltage across RI must be the same. And this would have a polarity minus to plus, right? Just like we have over here, right? It's going from ground plus minus to A. Ground is plus minus at A. So that means that this current would be flowing up in this direction. KCL says these two currents would have to combine and flow back into the op amp. So the op amp is sinking current, right? It's not sourcing current. Hence the inversion, and KCL can be written basically that I load would have to equal the current through RI plus the current through RF. Well, the current through RI is the generator current, the input current. How do we find the current through RF? Well, the current through RF, through Ohm's law, would just be voltage A, right, divided by RF. No biggie. But what's voltage A? Voltage A is a function of RI and the input generator current, right? So let's substitute that in there. So I gen times RI divided by, oops, I wrote RI, excuse me, I wrote RF, I meant RI, over RF. 
All right. So I can substitute back in here. This is I gen times R I. Keep wanting to write an F there. Uh, R I over R F. Now I can factor out the I gen. Okay. So that's going to be I gen or I n, whatever you want to call it, times 1 plus R I over R F. And of course, if you take your I gen and bring it to the other side, right, what's I load divided by I gen? Well, that's called your current gain, right? AI is your uh, output over your input, your I load over your I input, I generator, which is equal to one plus, oops, you know, I forgot my one back in here. I, I know I set it, but um, one plus, Ri over Rf. Hey, so just the ratio of these two resistors back here is what should set up the gain of our amplifier. So right now, this gain, right, would be 900 over 100, 9 plus 1, or a gain of 10. Okay, I'm going to clean this up here. So we should have a gain of 10. I've got 0.1 milliamps coming in, so times 10, this should be a 1 milliamp output. All right, let's take a um, look at that in our transient analysis. I'm only going to draw the output here. Let's see what we get. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I might rescale this. Let's bring this to, let's say, 2 instead of 10. All right, so now we can see that a little bit better. All right, so this is our uh, ammeter that we're reading, AC ammeter, all right, AM1. So I do see an inversion um, compared to what I had over here, right, on my, on my uh, diagram, the current was going up like this, all right. Um, amplitude, 0.1 milliamps times the gain of 10, 1 milliamp, we're looking good. There's a very slight DC offset in here. No biggie. You, know, you can see it's a, not quite minus 1 here, and it's a smidge over 1 here. So a little bit of a DC offset, but we, you know, we'll deal, deal with that in some, some other videos. But that looks pretty good. So let me turn around and change the value of my load impedance. So I go from 150 to 50. And remember, this should not have any impact. I should still get one milliamp. And it looks like we're going to, right, without uh, getting too crazy here. I'll rescale it. Oops. Bring that over one. And there we go, one mil. So happy as a clam. I don't know exactly how happy clams are, but there you go. Um, it should be the ratio of these two things that sets the gain, though. So, you know, what happens if uh, we change this 100 to, let's say, 50? Okay, well, now you've got a gain of 900 over 50 plus 1. All right, so instead of, instead of 9 plus 1, we're looking at 18 plus 1, 19. So this should be 19 times, or about 1.9 milliamps this time. And there you go. There's your two. Okay. Again, a little bit of a DC offset here, but you can see this is going to work out pretty nice. Get on there. So the positive peaks coming in at about 1.95, 1.96, a little bit high. And then this one's a little bit low. It's about 1.83, 1.84. Or so if you look at the peak to peak value, that's right on the money. Okay, we're looking at exactly what we want for that. Okay, beautiful. So in sum, we can say we have a current gain that's equal to 1 plus Ri over Rf. Just remember, with this input direction, right, this current is flowing up like this. So if you want to, you can think of this as a negative quantity 1 plus Ri over Rf. Uh, however you want to look at that. But... 
in any case, it's just the ratio of the two resistors. Load shouldn't make a difference, again, as long as we're operating within the normal constraints of the op amp. Current isn't too high to cause clipping. Voltage isn't too high to cause clipping. All right? Beautiful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And until next time, take care and have a good one.